to explode a pumpkin. Step-by-step -step experiment. Hello, science lovers. This is Sophie the Scientist. I love science and I hope you will too after today's video. Today, I'm going to show you how to explode a pumpkin. I think this is quite a fitting experiment now that Halloween is just around the corner. And I'll show you how to do it step-by-step. But do read our warning and disclaimer here and at the end of this video before trying to do this in school, at home, or anywhere else for that matter. So, let's take this outside, because my parents don't like exploding pumpkins in the house so much. Now, exploding pumpkins inside your house is never a good idea. But another reason that we're doing this experiment outside today is because we want to be in a well-ventilated area. We're going to be producing some highly flammable and explosive gases today. Here, we have a few different sized pumpkins, which we've already carefully scooped out, as you can see here. And we've carved some fun, spooky faces onto each of them. We found that simple shapes like circles, triangles, and squares work best. Try not to carve anything that's too large, too detailed, or otherwise over the top. And make sure that you poke the eyes, nose, and mouth out at least once to make sure that there aren't any pieces that are stuck too tightly. Otherwise, the explosion may not work as intended. So let's take our tiniest pumpkin to start. It's about seven inches in diameter. Here's what it looks like from the front. And here's what it looks like from the back. We carved a hole in the back of the pumpkin about half an inch in diameter using a screwdriver. This is where we're going to insert the lighter to ignite the explosion. Here, we have about 50 milliliters or 1.5 fluid ounces of water in a plastic container. And here we have two grams of calcium carbide. Now, we open the top of the pumpkin. I carefully put the container with the calcium carbide in the pumpkin, then poured in the water and quickly placed the top back on my pumpkin. Now I put my lighter in the hole in the back of the pumpkin. Wait 30 seconds for the calcium carbide to react with the water. Stand back as far as your arms reach and light it up inside of the pumpkin and kaboom. It was pretty amazing, right? Let's do it again with this slightly bigger pumpkin. This one is eight inches in diameter. Once again, we use 50 milliliters or 1.5 fluid ounces of water and two grams of calcium carbide. And this explosion is at least equally loud and impressive. Maybe even a bit more. And yes, the top of the pumpkin landed about 30 feet away. And once again, in slow motion to show you how powerful the explosion is. And now with our biggest pumpkin for today at nine inches in diameter. This one produces the most impressive effect. Because basically, the larger the pumpkin, the more explosive gas it can hold, and the stronger the explosion will be. The part between the nose and the eyes even broke off. That's how strong it was. And let's view it again in slow motion. What a grand finale, or? And we're back inside now. I'm not sure if you noticed, but everything was a bit wet when we exploded our pumpkins outside. Let's just say that we finished just in time, because it's pouring quite hard outside now. The weather has not been very cooperative this week. So we did use the same 50 milliliters of water and 2 grams of calcium carbide for all three pumpkin explosions we showed you today, even though they were different sizes. Remember, the first pumpkin was 7 inches in diameter. The second pumpkin was eight inches in diameter, and the last one was nine inches in diameter. For the nine inch pumpkin, the largest one, we waited 35 seconds to light it up after we mixed the water and calcium carbide, instead of the 30 seconds we waited for the two smaller pumpkins. And this last explosion was the strongest, as we just saw before. Firstly, because we waited a tad bit longer, but secondly, also because of the larger size. The larger volume meant that the 9-inch pumpkin was holding more explosive gas when we ignited it. Using the same amount of water and calcium carbide, and varying the time a little bit for the 9-inch diameter pumpkin worked well for us. But if you use different pumpkin sizes, or even just because curious minds want to know, you can test different times and or different doses of calcium carbide as well, generally speaking. The bigger the pumpkin, the longer you may have to wait to ignite the explosion, and or the more calcium carbide you may need to use. For example, if we use 2 grams of calcium carbide but there is no explosion after 1 minute, what we typically do is wait 20 seconds longer and turn the lighter on again inside the pumpkin. 
and we keep doing this every 20 seconds until the pumpkin explodes, or until we hit the two minute mark. If there is still no explosion after two minutes, this usually means that two grams of calcium carbide is not enough for the size of the pumpkin. What we do then is carefully remove the cup of water and calcium carbide from inside the pumpkin, and then start all over again. But the second time, we increase the initial amount of 2 grams of calcium carbide, and use 2.5 grams as the next step. If you've ever done this experiment before with your science class, drop a comment below. Do you have any tips, tricks, or insights to share? And let us know what some of your favorite science experiments of all time are. Regardless of whether they involve pumpkins and Halloween or not. So I'm sure some of you may be wondering, what is the actual science behind this exploding pumpkin experiment? Well, when we add water to calcium carbide, or CaC2, one calcium atom bound together with two carbon atoms in a molecule. So, when we add water to calcium carbide, it produces acetylene gas, or C2H2 as you can see here. In our experiment, the gas then fills up the pumpkin, and when we ignite it, a very fast reaction occurs and begins to form carbon dioxide, or CO2 and water. You can see what happens as well. These flames mean that a large amount of energy is being released as the gas transforms at a rapid pace. When this energy is initially being released by ignition, and the hot gases start expanding rapidly inside the enclosed space of the pumpkin, all that energy is initially trapped and has nowhere to go. But it's this trapped energy inside the pumpkin, the rapidly expanding gas, that then pushes out the carved out eye, nose, mouth, and other pieces in our explosion. And fun fact, back in the olden days, one of the primary uses of calcium carbide was in carbide lamps. Before the invention of electric light, carbide lamps gave a brighter and steadier light than candles, which was clearly much welcome for many purposes. But especially in mining, when you are working underground all day. Here's a photo of a carbide lamp that was made by the Baldwin Company of New York City during the early 20th century. When water from the lamp's upper level dripped onto the calcium carbide that was stored in the base of the lamp, the result was acetylene gas, which was then used to produce light. Carbide lamps were typically used in slate, copper, and tin mines, but not in coal mines, where there was methane gas because methane gas, like the acetylene gas produced by combining calcium carbide and water, is also highly flammable. And combining two highly flammable gases in an enclosed space is not a good idea, to say the least. Nowadays, electric LED lamps have replaced carbide lamps in the mining industry as well as for most other uses. But they are still around. So in case you want to add a carbide lamp to your Halloween costume this year, you'll be happy to know that Amazon really does sell almost everything. But back to our exploding pumpkin experiment now. Here's what I needed to perform this experiment. At least one, but better, several medium-sized pumpkins. Carving tools to cut out the pumpkin faces, calcium carbide, and forceps or pincers for the calcium carbide, because you shouldn't touch it directly with your hands. If you don't buy your calcium carbide in pre-measured portions, you will need a precise scale as well to measure it out. Also on our material list is water, plastic containers for the water, a measuring cup to measure out the water, a screwdriver to carve the hole in the back of the pumpkin, a timer or stopwatch, and a lighter with a long handle to add some distance between me and the pumpkin when it's lit. And of course, safety goggles, some chemical resistant gloves, and my trusted chemical resistant lab coat. My parents were also standing nearby with fire extinguishers at hand, just in case. We carved quite a few pumpkins for this experiment, as you've already seen, which means we had a lot of pumpkin flesh and seeds left afterwards. Now, I've been carving pumpkins for Halloween since I was a kid, but I never knew all the things you could do with the insides of a pumpkin until this experiment. Let's just say that instead of throwing it all out, we ate more pumpkin soup the past week than I was expecting. So I hope you enjoyed this fun Halloween experiment and learned something scientific. What other experiments you want us to do in the future? Drop a comment below and let me know. And be sure to check out this other fun, easy Halloween experiment when I show you what happens when you microwave peeps. I've linked it up here for you. And see you again very soon with even more science fun and facts.